What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. With Sonichu issue 5, the story strays further and further away from the Sonichu storyline and makes Christian the main character, with the plot of the comic closely mirroring his own life. The comic begins with Sarah's wedding, with Chris attending in spirit, possibly alluding that he didn't attend her actual wedding. The episode also introduces two new characters, Megajula Skunk, based on a character created by Megan, and Sailor Megtoon, indisputably symbolizing Megan herself. He briefly fights off Wes Eisley, and at the end of the episode, Sarah thanks him for all the childhood years they had together, and wishes him good luck on his advances towards Megan. Sarah throws her bouquet at him, and he catches it, believing this means his own wedding will come shortly. Christian blatantly uses this comic to depict his inner monologue and fantasies to the world. I love Megan, yet she's not ready to return or seek it. I'd feel better if I could chat with her on the phone, although she's uncomfortable doing that. Our email communications are okay, but speech speaks louder than typed words. The artwork also changes to an unmistakably anime and manga style, perhaps in an effort to appeal to Megan even more. In the following episode, Christian has a lengthy discussion with Sonichu about his optimistic hope that he and Megan will get together, despite him admitting a few pages ago that she was not responsive to his advances. He acknowledges that he is so optimistic that he even stopped using his attraction sign. They're interrupted by the announcement that Mary Lee Walsh and the Jerkops are invading Quickville, so Chris teams up with Megan, Crystal, and the Chaotic Combo. During the climax, Crystal gets trapped in the dark mirror, and Christian comforts a tearful Megan, who thought that she had lost Chris for good. His obsession with Megan is made crystal clear, and is further confirmed by the email she sent to him. I know you know I hate guys and I hate love, because I told you a million times, so why do you keep getting too close and touching me? I really don't like it at all. I know you said because you have feelings for me and it's hard for you, but I'm sorry this sounds mean. You really need to try and get over it. If you keep hanging on like that to someone who doesn't love you back, well it'll only make you more miserable. You need to just accept the fact that I don't and I will probably never love you, so you should just take a rejuvenating breath and move on. Advice to which Chris refused to listen, as is evident in an email written just a month later. Also, I'm just a little mad that I have to keep telling you to please stop touching me. It's like you're not wanting to listen to me. I tell you, then you say okay, but eventually you're back to the same tricks. And this time I really mean it. Even my other friends don't like it and think it's weird. So once and for all, could you please stop? You know I don't like it, so why do you keep doing it? It's not like you're gonna try and soften me or something. So I don't want to have to tell you again or I might get really angry. Because you know, unwanted remarks or advances to a girl is sexual harassment, and I don't take that lightly. Chris's not-so-subtle attempts at getting her attention did not go unnoticed. Sometimes I get the feeling that you copy me to get me to like you. Like Sailor Moon, for example. The only Sailor Moon thing you had was that adult video, and since I told you how much I love it, then you start getting into it. Kinda like My Little Pony. That kind of thing really annoys me. I don't like it much when people get into something right after they find out I liked it first. When you said we had a lot in common like Sailor Moon and My Little Pony, well, who loved Sailor Moon first? Who collected My Little Pony first? Okay, I know I sound like a spoiled brat, but can you see what I'm trying to say? I don't like being too in common with others. I try to be different from others as possible. On June 27th, 2006, Patty Chandler was put to sleep. A day later, at a special service, Christian read the eulogy, which he wrote himself. My family, furry friends, anyone else present. We are gathered here today to pay our last respects and wishes to our dearly beloved Beagle Spitz, Patty, who has departed from our world here on Earth to a doggy heaven where she will be happier, because she will run free and play with all the other dogs who are already having fun up there. I will always remember Patty for all the lovely memories she has shared with me from when I picked her out of the litter at my Aunt Karina's house in Red Oak, Virginia. The time I watched my old best friend, Sarah Hammer, take Patty by her front paws and danced a bit. 
the times I've watched her stand on her hind legs and then rewarded her with a biscuit bone, the times I just sat with her in the yard and petted her head. I've always given her a bolly scratch, where I stroke her head with all five fingers, like as if I was gently squeezing a rubber ball. The many times I've fed her a can of food and a cup full of dry food and refilled her bucket with fresh water so she can drink it and wash her face. When Patty was brought to the vet on that fateful day, I was distraught with fright and concern for her health. I stayed with her during her final moments, with a hand on her head and a tear in my eye. When my mother was brought the paper that gave the doctor permission to send her on her way, I didn't want her to be the one to sign it. I raised Patty since she was a six-week-old pup, and I wanted to take the strain for signing the one-way ticket. It was hard for me, but it was for the best. So I signed that paper, with a crying sonichu face, saying, We love you, Patty. After that, I gave her my final pets, hug, hand-to-paw hold, eye contact, ear rub, cheek-to-fur rub, and I sadly waved her for the final time, and I said, Goodbye, Patty. I love you. As I stood outside, I heard Patty's last barks, saying, I will always love you, Chris. Thank you. But we all must move on with our lives, with our beloved Lucky Mutt in our hearts and in our memories. So Patty, may your old doghouse and surrounding flowers forever memorialize your blessed heart, your barks at the stars and strangers, and your loyal love that you have blessed upon me and my family and friends. Bark on, and rest in peace, our beloved Lucky Patty. What would you do for a PS3 and a chance to be on Robot Chicken? In November, Adult Swim held another contest, this time encouraging viewers to submit a video wherein they would say what they would do for a PlayStation 3. Christian's video featured the appearance of his own makeshift PS3, which was nothing more than a PlayStation 2 encased in a mix of Lego and Pixel Block pieces. Hello, my name is Christian Weston Chandler from Rockersville, Virginia. What would you do for a PS3? What I would do for a PS3? I tell you what I do. Well, if I had the money, I'd wait in line, like all the other people did with their tents and all that good stuff. I'd throw away the cure for autism if I had it, because I want to get rid of that dog, doggone long, lifelong curse that I've had. And, uh, oh yeah, I would trade in my PS2 for another thing. Or, uh, otherwise, um, I'd make one from wood if it was hard enough. But you know what I did? I did it. I made it. I made one from Legos and Pixel Blocks. And believe it or not, I actually play guitar here on this thing. Thunder Horse! In the beginning of 2007, Christian started working on a DVD called Yep, I'm on TV, which would become a collection of all his TV appearances and his homemade videos, in addition to a slideshow of his pictures up to 2007. He planned to release it to only a small selection of people, including Mrs. Sanford, with whom he got in touch via email. You may be able to help me in a portion of it now. There will be a slideshow, projected from my PlayStation Portable, featuring not only pics of me growing up, but the friends, teachers, and relatives I've known and remembered, either from heart, like yourself, as well as yearbook signatures. As for what had happened during PVCC, in a nutshell, about midsummer 2003, I've realized upon revelation that I needed a girlfriend to make into a sweetheart from the ground up. So with a sign, which I've later realized that it made me look slow-minded, the R word, I've started my enduring love quest. The Dean of Student Services, Mary Lee Walsh, came out and tore my sign up right in front of me and said, you're not gonna get a girlfriend this way or any way. That b shattered my heart and murdered my soul. And it wasn't just her. The policemen, imposters in brown, white, and red, aka the jerk cops, blue and black, are the true police soldiers. Also seriously indented the impression that Virginia is for virgins, not lovers. He talked about his high hopes in a future with Megan, and ensured her that she'll receive a copy of the DVD. Three days before his birthday, he completed Sonichu issue 6. The first story, entitled One Lucky Dog, is strikingly distinct from the episodes thus far which stars his recently deceased dog, Patty. The story opens with a creative blend of photographic backgrounds and a hand-drawn Patty, who wishes she could speak so she could thank Christian for all he has done for her. The next morning, Christian walks outside to feed her, only to discover that his dog is transformed into an anthropomorphic dog-like creature who can speak. They spend some leisurely time together, 
and she tells Chris that she wishes to roam free outside her pen. Chris leads her indoors and shows her his room, which Patty calls crowded and suggests that if he got a girlfriend, she would help him tidy up. Using a Nintendo DS, Chris reveals a portal which opens up to Quickville and declares the town Patty's new roaming grounds, where she can finally explore with freedom. The final page of the story is a simple full-page tribute to Patty Chandler. The next episode resumes where the last comic left off. As Chris and the gang debate the best way to rescue Crystal, they come to the conclusion that they need to acquire the seven Sonichu balls to save her. They discover an evil green Sonichu, who then envelops Chris in a dark dimension, in which he announces himself as the Sonichu form of Natsurk, who then reveals his true true form, and declares that he is in fact Reldnag Natsu Natsurk. As the name implies, he is completely the opposite of Christian, with a semi bare chest symbolizing his raging homosexuality, which horrifies and offends Chris. Meanwhile, Black Sonichu announces he has turned his back on Natsurk, and now he is on friendly terms with Chris's friends, and has also all of a sudden developed a romantic interest in Bubbles. Chris and Natsurk transform into their Sonichu forms and battle. They battle until Chris Chan somehow ends up back in Manchester High School. Just as Natsurk is about to deal the final blow, a phantom basketball knocks him unconscious. Chris is woken up by Megan, who tells him that Natsurk fell into a coma after hitting his head on the bleachers and is currently in the hospital. Bionic the Hedgehog reveals himself as the one who wielded the basketball at Natsurk's head. They reminisce about old times and how Chris hasn't drawn Bionic since 2004. Chris laments that he is 25 years old, having never even had a date, but it shouldn't matter. The dialogue suddenly becomes a promo for his up-and-coming Yep, I'm on TV DVD which will not be available for purchase. The scene cuts to 10 weeks later, when Natsurk awakens from his coma with a fiery urge to murder Bionic the Hedgehog. On February 24th, 2007, Christian celebrated his very special 25th birthday. He held the joint birthday and DVD launch party at what appeared to be the game place. To mark the special occasion and to instill wisdom onto others, he recorded his important message video in which he reflects on all he has learned over the course of his life. He wished for it to become an educational video shown in schools, but this goal has yet to be accomplished. Hello ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler, I am here, and y'all are there. <laughs> this message is for everyone of the present and the future beyond this date, February 24th, 2007. My birthday, my 25th birthday. I am high functioning autistic, and in my 25 years, I have seen and learned so much. And today, I shared, intended to share some wise words that I hope each and every one of you will take to heart and allow for yourself and everyone else a better prior future. He encourages his audience not to take up dirty habits like drinking or smoking. You should avoid at all costs smoking, drinking alcohol, and intaking similar icky, dangerous stuff. And smoking will eventually cause cancer, and it will, you'll be more likely to get heart attack, viruses, and your life will be cut drastically short. They don't call cigarettes and cigars death sticks from nothing other than killing you slowly. If I could, I would take every last ounce of tobacco, put them on a rocket, and shoot them up to the moon. He encourages boys to buy a My Little Pony figure to get used to the female form and pretend to treat it like the girl they like. If you're a young gentleman, I recommend buying yourself a My Little Pony figure of your favorite color or whatever. Now, uh, stroking the hair of said pony is very relaxing and therapeutic and also rubbing it against your cheek. That's nice. And also, uh, you can pretend that uh, the pony is uh, that girl you want to take you want to take out to, you want to take out sometime, and talk to the pony like you would talk to the girl. And he recommends that girls get transformers. Now, for the uh, ladies, I recommend a good old Autobot from Transformers because you can get to learn how to examine the mechanics and variations of each and every, I mean, of the uh, Autobot you have, like uh, you would try, like you would learn how a man works, and it'll allow you to feel more comfortable in approaching 
and talking to that boy you've been flirting from a distance or uh, just been uh, flirting with from a distance and uh, hopefully uh, all, you, all you have to do is just end up and say hello I mean it's not so hard all you have to do is say hello to the man ladies that's all and everything will just keep rolling from there he encourages girls to be more open to having a relationship with less attractive males and states the importance of staying with your first mate, neglecting that both of his parents were married before. He finally stresses the point that it is crucial that boys and girls stay straight. Also keep in mind that while you're playing with these things, you should keep in mind of what your true original gender is. Because uh, it's like you're learning about that girl you want to take on a date, young man. Or uh, likewise, you feel more comfortable to approach that boy uh, just saying hello that you've been checking out from a distance, young lady. And hopefully in due time or now, each and every one of you will stay straight. You know, girl for boy, boy for girl. Everything else is vice, as said by Dr. Kinsey. And besides, if you stray away from the straight path, it can really jeopardize the entire future of the world and the human race. This video would become the final addition to his DVD. I am Christopher Christian Weston Chandler. Live long and shine on in your very own unique way. War is never the answer. Peace is. Never fight. Compliments will get you fuzzy wuzzies. War gets you prickly wicklies. As well as punches, they get you those too. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. In March, Chris reignited communications through email with his half-brother Cole Smithy, who had made a career for himself as a film critic. This renewed interest was most likely in order to acquire his address so Chris could send his DVD to his brother. I have talked to mom, and I quote her when she says, I do not regret giving life to Cole. We've had a bunch of good years up till the madness. And all things considered, I still love Cole, very much like any mother would love her son. She really does. Cole's response was brutally cold and honest. I grew up in an abusive household with Barbara and my former stepfather, Jerry, where physical and mental punishments ran the gambit from bare ass beatings to cold showers to bizarre scenarios acted out with glee by two deeply neurotic adults. The treatment I received in Richmond, Virginia was another matter altogether. To raise a child in such conditions is inexcusable. Even at a very young age, I knew that they would abandon me. They were both irresponsible and incompetent parents who exposed me to traumas that I would rather not remember. He continued to elaborate on his feelings towards Bob. The crux of my problem with Barbara comes from two sources. The first is Bob's bitter influence on her, which worked to separate our relationship just as Bob did with his own children, with whom he has no association. In nearly 44 years of life, I've never met a meaner or more reprehensible Republican cur than Bob Chandler. I hope that you will email me when he dies so that I can celebrate our mutual hatred has never been a secret, and it points out Barbara's proclivity to isolate herself via scurrilous mates. The second and more compelling issue that permanently ruined my relationship with Barbara is the litany of lies she tells anyone who listened about the identity of my biological father and about her marriage history. He revealed that he employed a private investigator to track down his biological father, who was most likely a man named Rand Coleman Yates, to whom Barbara was married. Go ahead and send your DVD to my address listed below. You and I may be related, but our mother only loves you. As the months progressed, Chris and Megan's strained relationship carried on. Chris emailed her about her story ideas, revealing that their opinions on the Sonic 2 storyline are split. She told him that she did not appreciate him depicting her original female characters with breasts, and once more ordered Christian to stop touching her. In May, Chris created a YouTube account called Sonic and uploaded his first video a fight on the game's soul caliber of Chris versus Marilee Walsh. Sage wins. See that? In June, Megan left for Kentucky, with Chris emailing her frequently, updating her with his activities at the game place, and saying how much he missed her. He also mentioned attending an upcoming rummage sale in town, which ended up being reported on in the Daily Progress, with Barbara and Christian receiving an honorary mention. Right behind Ross, Christian and Barbara Chandler were waiting to shop. Christian wanted toys and video games, while his mother wanted to look for fabric. In the meantime, Sony held the Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown Contest to promote the Parappa the Rapper video game 
which required contestants to submit a video of themselves performing a song from the game. However, they were limited to only using their own voices, with the use of backing tracks resulting in a disqualification. The winner would get two PSPs and an all-expense trip to Seattle's Penny Arcade Expo. Chris was convinced that if he were to win the competition, he could give one of the PSPs to Megan and then invite her along to Seattle so she could fall in love with him and finally take his virginity. Hey, P Station. My name is Christian Chandler. I live in Brooksville, Virginia. I have a PSP. I like to rap. I play with the rapper. I go with you now. The only song I know is Master Onion, which I got from a demo I bought from my friend Megan. Chris's video was far from polished, with rehearsal likely kept at a minimum. Kick, punch, it's all in the mind. If you want to let test me, I'm sure you'll find that you all think that I teach you sure to beat ya. He inserts various seemingly random video effects, which were at his disposal via the camera he used to film the video, the PlayStation Eye. Duck and turn, duck and turn. We're gonna jump and pose, jump pose. Come on now, watch it follow my word. Cause now it's almost done, it'll make things worse. Do rock gun, yo. Na 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 na. Rap, rap, rap. That's a rap. Christian found out that his entry made it into the top 10 and was now eligible to the public vote, ultimately due to the low number of total entries. He announced his elation online and urged everyone to vote for him on all his websites and social media. He also emailed several people asking for their vote. This included some unlikely candidates, such as his former guidance counselor from PBCC, Susan Hannafin, and his brother. After some deliberation, Cole agreed to vote for Chris only after Chris asked their mother about who Cole's real father was. Chris promptly replied that he asked her and claimed that his father was Jack Dale Smithy, which Cole knew to be untrue. Understandably unsatisfied and upset, he continued to email Chris about how Barbara enveloped his life in lies, closing with an earnest wish to be informed of Bob's eventual passing. Chris intensified his campaign by handing out flyers at the game place, urging fellow visitors to vote. He even resorted to voting for his own video by making fake accounts and gave himself a glowing review Video Lucky 7. Such honesty of his situation and devotion for his lucky girlfriend adds great emotions to his performance. The visually appealing effects added the best humor and biggest laugh I had among the bunch. I enjoyed the fun background of his assumed to be bedroom, and his informative feedback on playing Guitar Hero on PlayStation 3 was truly a wise and great addition. Also, he has nailed the lyrics a cappella. As this brave autistic warrior so creatively put it at the end, rap rap rap, that's a rap. Truly the cherry on the top of the Sunday. A perfect score of 5 out of 5 stars for his marvelous effort and smiling at knowing he looked a bit stupid. Voting was closed at the end of July. The polls are closed and I am anxious to find out if I am number one of the rappers or not. I really want that trip to Seattle so I can be with my sweet Megan longer than usual and have fun together. I love her so much. On August 3rd, it was announced that the winner of the Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown was Adam Stackhouse. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. M I X the flower into the bowl. Chris immediately wrote a strongly capitalized email to Sony, demanding they reconsider. I really wanted that trip so I could have a chance to impress my sweetest Megan and possibly fulfill my dream of getting married and soon have a daughter named Crystal. Yet now I, a frustrated, high-functionally autistic 25-year-old virgin have been balls broken like I have through a big chunk of my life in America's favorite game, Kick the Autistic. Sigh. I had my fantasies of having fun with Megan, taking her to a really extravagant destination. I am not rich. Taking a long-wanted tour of the Nintendo of America company tour. With her, playing Guitar Hero against the guy in the Parappa costume. Jamming with Megan in the hotel room and possibly our first time in bed. Sigh. Life can be so unfair and f corrupt. But I digress. Take the a cappella rule to the max on those three out of ten videos. Take care. Christian Weston Chandler. He argued that the winning entry used a backing track and had to be disqualified. However, since the backing music was actually sung in a cappella, the entry was deemed suitable. Chris seemingly ignored the rule that contestants could not rewrite the lyrics, which Chris obviously did, thus disqualifying himself. He directed his anger towards Stackhouse in his blog post on the PlayStation Network's website. This is directed mostly to Adam Stackhouse, 
the SOB, who was the alphabetically first video in the Parappa contest and got wrongfully the big prize. This jerk's video was against the no music rule. His, Surya Butchwald and Abrilewski's video all should have been disqualified because they all had music. He also let Megan know about his sorrow. I'm angry, depressed, and lonesome all simultaneously. I worked so d hard. I sent like over 500 messages between MySpace, PlayStation Network, and AOL. And I even made up over 120 dummy email accounts to match with their dummy PlayStation accounts so I could stuff the f ballot. Sigh. I failed. So much effort. Rapping and dancing with goofy effects to be even considered. Spreading the word as far and wide as possible. Wasted. And I did it all for you, Megan. I had you in my heart as I chopped the onion a la mode dance. Megan finally let him have a piece of her mind. I just want to say that your behavior has irritated me for the last time. First, I'll start off with saying that I'm glad you didn't win the contest, because I have no interest in going on a trip alone with someone who can't keep his hands off me. I'm not your girlfriend, and I never will be. When I say don't touch me, that means don't touch me. What may seem friendly to you is sexual harassment to me. And I don't like your Megan obsession. I don't like being a character in your comics. I don't like how you made me a character in Soul Calibur and Animal Crossing. That kind of behavior really freaks me out. To release his rage, Christian filmed a video of himself shooting a dart firing Megatron pistol at a dartboard with a photo of Adam Stackhouse's face on it. And that is how angry I am at Adam Stackhouse, Apraluski, Rudell, and Surya Butchwald. They should have been disqualified because they had music and more than one person and their freakazoid videos. As time went on, his attitude towards Megan changed a little, announcing his displeasure at her fraternizing with her friend Christopher. The hugging was one thing, but when I heard the smack of your kiss on his cheek, it started a chain reaction in my head from OMG to simultaneous infuration and jealousy. I assure you that I would not do anything extreme to Christopher. Originally, I was not fond of him because it was obvious that he was a homo. Yes, I am a homophobe. I fear them all, and I fear the tormenting temptations of falling off the straight path. But then I mentally, sometimes from a DVD, and if you'll pardon the expression, shove some pussy in my face. I tell you what, if I ever stoop down to changing my path, I might as well get a gender change operation. In late October, Daniel Mims, who frequented the game place, covertly snapped a couple of photos of Chris in mid-battle, and his buddy Lucas uploaded it onto the image board 4chan. A user on the comedy website Something Awful, who had seen Christian on the UVA campus, created a thread focused on Christian and his comics, unleashing the Christian myth onto the world. Members debated over the veracity of his supposed actions, and those who have witnessed him in person shared their story. The fascination around Chris quickly spread to other websites. The outlandishness of his situation motivated people to draw inappropriate fan art featuring Chris and his Sonichu characters. On November 3rd, in a thread on 4chan, a user named Evan Christopher George was encouraged to send Chris an email showcasing a small selection of fan art. This is some fan art of Sonichu my friends and I have drawn. I hope you enjoy it. The included images were Chris hosting girlfriend auditions with no darkies written on his desk, a short comic about Chris losing his virginity by having sex with Sonichu, a graphic depiction of Sonichu masturbating while yelling out No Darkies Jerk Up. And Chris and Chris Chan Sonichu having a stare down. Chris's reply was rather unexpected. Thank you for your fan art contributions. In constructive criticism, I like the one with me and the girlfriend auditions, as well as my glaring in the eyes of the blue guy. But I am feeling great detest towards the other two. Sonichu and I are not of that nature at all. If you would like to make it up to me, though, Please draw a strip of Rose Chu stripping for Sonichu and have him f her. And draw Rose Chu masturbating and squirting. I am straight, dammit. I will not be veered in any other disgustingly grotesque direction. Again, most nasty fan arts are not appreciated at all. Please feel free to share that quote with the rest of the fans. Sincerely, Christian Weston Chandler. We're keeping track. Evan immediately posted Chris's response. And in order to archive all future interactions, Jason Kendrick Hall created a page on the satirical Wikipedia-style website Encyclopedia Dramatica, solely devoted to Christian. Under the assumption that these people on the internet provoking and making fun of him, or trolls, were genuine fans of his, he shared the news with Megan. 
The good news, though, is that I've had more fans for Sonic Youth than I thought. Now the worst to bed. I got this email earlier that had a set of four fan art of Sonic Youth and me. While I enjoyed more of the spoof of me sitting at by a box on a sidewalk, girlfriend auditions, and the one with me glaring in the eyes of a blue hedgehog in armor, the other two in that set of four freaked, creeped, and scared the crap out of my head. A lot worse than my freak out over you on Christopher's lap last night. Please keep that in private. In other words, get a room. I sent him a reply with respect of criticism. I was infuriated. He also found out about an artist on Deviant Art who made Sonic 2 related fan art, but did not credit Chris in it, and also discovered the Encyclopedia Dramatica page. In the meantime, Evan continued to send Chris more fan art. I'm very sorry I disappointed you, Chris Chan. I drew what you wished. He sent a drawing of a naked Rose Chu having sex with Sonic 2, and finally masturbating and squirting out of her gigantic penis. Oh, and here's more art for more of my friends. I didn't draw any of this stuff though, so if you don't like it, I have no guilt. This email included more graphic content, including Marilee Walsh and a transgender Rose Chu. Alright, I have one last batch of fan art. I'm sorry to send so many to you, but my friends are really eager to share it all. I hope you enjoy. He attached more fan art, a few more tasteful than the rest. Chris replied, disclosing a link to his ED page. Evan coyly denied accountability. What? What a horrible page. I'm sorry. I must wonder how they got pictures of our emails. I hope no one's hacking my email account. Ignoring security concerns, Christian sent another angry email. Do me a favor. Draw a vagina on my Rose Chew. Rose Chew is a girl. She never had a freaking pickle. If I see one more freaking pickle, and you may spread this quote to other adult fan artists, I will create you in Soul Calibur 3 and beat you up like there's no tomorrow. Evan replied with a simple uh-oh and a picture of Rose Chew holding a pickle, saying, I wish Pickles could masturbate and squirt. And Evan saying, Fudge, you're going to beat me up in SC now, aren't you? I shouldn't have let our souls get fiercely entangled. On November 4th, someone who called herself Vivian G sent an email claiming that she independently created a similar character called Sonichu and wanted Chris to acknowledge that it wasn't stealing. Evidently, he stated that it was fan art and that she couldn't keep doing it because his characters mean too much to him. Vivian then sent a caps locked email trying to convince him to improve himself. Jesus, are you so high on your horse that you think it's fan art? Jesus Christ, man, you are irritating me. You are putting me under more damn stress than you'll ever have. I want to express my goddamn self to the internet and I find that some prick who thinks he's so great can call homosexuals wrong and I have two lesbian friends who would be offended as f by your ignorance and things like going around stalking girls will get you a girlfriend. Newsflash, bitch. You mean nothing to this world and you will never get f***ing laid unless you improve yourself. Your troubles with jerk ops isn't because of them, it's because of you. F off and die. This entire debacle encouraged Joshua Martinez to mess with Chris, who first met him at James Madison University, where they both received speech therapy and remained as friends. He managed to convince Chris that he regularly schmoozed with movie stars, thanks to his connections to the movie business. He contacted Chris and claimed that he found a girl who would like to meet him, when in fact he was only trolling him. He even pretended to be this lorry and had a conversation with Chris through instant messaging. Christian reported on his elation in an email to Anna. Her name is Lori Lopez. I chatted with her through AOL instant message last night. She was really sweet, and not only did I have a great time getting to know her, but, blush, I got turned on. I know that she works at a car lot, I think. She is 23, brunette, brown eyes, and she is a mix of American and Spanish. If you watch the movie Into the Blue, the starring woman, Jessica Alba, is an American-Spanish mix as well. He also mentioned her to Megan, and even attached a supposed photo of her. On November 7th, Christian filmed a video pleading those involved with the ED page to be more respectful about him and take it down, and talked in length about his life and what caused him to be in this current situation. It has come to my attention that I have a lot more fans of my electronic, electric hedgehog Pokemon Sanchu than I had originally thought. And I thank each and every one of you for your support. And I will draw more comics uh, when I get some positive inspiration or uh, when I feel like it. After all, everybody, else, everybody has a life, so do I. I have a life. I would like to humbly apologize for appearing to be some kind of sleaze, troll, badass, or whatever adjectives good or explicit you may feel about me. Uh, 
Please understand, I am a 25-year-old, high-functioning, autistic male with a simple, peaceful dream of becoming a father of a sweet, little, pretty girl who I will dub the name Crystal Weston Chandler. Crystal, a name that sounds similar to mine, but it has a nice ring to it. He claims his family on his mother's side stems from British royalty. Weston, my mother's maiden name and a proper English name from royal descent. As a matter of fact, among my uh, mother's side and the uh, ancestral traits, we have, uh, we have been traced down to Daniel Weston, who was on the May Mayflower voyage, and uh, beyond him, Anne Boleyn, who was the uh, one of Henry VIII's, King Henry VIII's wives, who gave birth to uh, Queen Elizabeth I. <coughs> he talks about his upbringing, the struggles of the school system, and his achievements in high school. He defends his methods for finding a sweetheart. All I did was sit around with a sign by my side that said I was looking for a boyfriend-free girl, 1825, yada, 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 all that page. And I did all that because I have feared rejection and the infinitely high boyfriend factor because you cannot tell which ladies are paired up and which are not. And wedding rings, that's just a whole different story because they're married. Because it's not like you give every woman a ring who's already paired up. Now this is one perspective. So please understand, I am not a violent person. I'm decent. I come from a caring, loving pair of parents. I'm kind. I'm considerate. I will respect your space and your feelings ever so much. Thank you very much for your time and listening. And please remember, I'm an innocent person. Just like most every one of you, I've had my faults. I've had my share of bad times. I have my share of good times. Please understand that. Thank you again. Take care. With this recent upsurge in interest for Chris, he had the ability to raise awareness for his cause and maybe even take proper action to prevent further trolling. Maybe if he took matters into his own hands, in a reasonable and polite manner, he could have made all of this fade away.